Hello, I'm Nan Simonson. Today is June 21st, 2022. Do you know what that is? That's the first day of summer. I'm here to say happy summer. <laughs> I don't have much more to say to you, even though I've got a few things. And um, it's the longest day of the year. It's the summer solstice. Love that. What does that mean to you? Um, what does summer mean to you? Well, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, Live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, drink in the wild air. He was speaking of the summertime. I had a rude awakening, and it was actually a comeuppance. It was actually a um, <laughs> come downance. And that is that on Monday morning, after um, having a, a rough night, uh, Sunday night, I took a COVID test and it was positive. I sat there and, <laughs> like the person that doesn't want to be pregnant, <laughs> that's like, oh heck no. It's been almost two and a half years that we've been fighting with COVID. And I haven't gotten it. Now, I was vaccinated one, two, and three times. In February or March, I had a booster to the two Modernas. So, uh, I wouldn't say I was golden, but um, I figured I was protected. Nah. <laughs> and what's interesting is that I was with friends on Wednesday. A friend and I had lunch together at a nearby restaurant. On Thursday, middle of, well, 3.30, there was an opening, uh, the opening of a wonderful art center, uh, the Cheech uh, Center of uh, Chicano Art here in Riverside. Hundreds of people. I was there with a group of 10. And then on Friday, I was with another group of 10, but in an outdoor uh, dining setting. And I thought, oh. No, I've got to let all these people know because I don't know where this thing came from. So I sent out a group text, and boy, is that humbling. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Ugh, sorry, sorry. And uh, turned out I heard within 10 minutes from a friend that I was with on Wednesday at lunch, Thursday at the, um, the opening of the Cheech, uh, it's Cheech Marin of Cheech and Chong. He has a marvelous, a remarkable art collection and we built him a um, art center that he can show his pieces at. He had 700 pieces. He's lent us or given us 500 and, and we will have traveling shows. It's marvelous. It's, it's national news. And um, she was there with me as well, not on Friday. And um, she was positive as well. And this is, well, everything I'm wearing today, uh, I guess this, <laughs> and my rings were made by her, Jennifer Cotts, and she's a, a jewelry maker, silversmith, and does beautiful work. Uh, she also was um, tested positive. So the two of us have COVID. We let everybody know nobody else has it. So we're thinking maybe it happened on Wednesday. Maybe the waitress breathing on us. Maybe sitting at a table where somebody sneezed. Maybe because we both had a salad um, cool food. Somebody in the kitchen sneezed. Who knows? It hasn't happened in two and a half years. I stopped wearing a mask quite a long time ago when I got vaccinated and a lot of us stopped wearing masks. So it happens and, and I, it's a comeuppance because, uh, nobody is immune to anything. <laughs> now I'm I will we'll see it play out. So that was Monday. Today is um, Tuesday. And it's turned into, it's worse than it was on Monday, but it's turned into a, a snotty, coughy, achy, fevery, it stays at about 100, cold. That's what it feels like. And maybe that's where my whole food, plant-based um diet has made a difference. I wrote Aging Powerfully with NAN, and powerfully is an acronym for 10 things that we can do 
in our lives to give us health, strength, vitality, enjoyment of movement, and um, longevity. At 71, I'm hoping to have another one, two, or three decades, but you got to do it with forethought. Stay away from processed foods. Stay away from the foods that damage us. Instead, go toward the foods that feed us what our body needs, and that's whole food as plant predominant as possible. That has been shown to be true by hundreds of studies. Uh, in any case, uh, doesn't make us bulletproof, okay? Uh, and I have been researching about the COVID and uh, David Kotz, K, well, Katz, K-A-T-Z, a preventive medicine doctor of very high ranking in the United States and internationally, a fabulous speaker, has been treating patients, I believe, for 35, 40 years, even though he looks like he's only in his 40s or his 50s, takes very good care of himself. He got COVID and he ended up getting long COVID from it. Long COVID is the residual effects of COVID, which as he points out in a video that I listened to of his, that there are a number of bacterial but also viral diseases that play out long term, like um, um, Lyme disease. I have a friend, a dear friend, who got Lyme disease oh God, maybe a decade ago, and it still haunts her physically because of the spirochetes that find places to hide throughout her body. So apparently long COVID is something that is is um, happening as well to people and very healthy people like Dr. David Katz. So knock on wood, we'll see where this goes, but I, I believe that it paid off still to be in top condition to feed my body not only regularly but exclusively foods that are antioxidant high in vitamins and minerals phytonutrients phytochemicals um, polyphenols fiber fiber is more important than protein when people say nan where do you get your protein I'll say, eat any plant food you want in any combination. You're going to get enough protein if you get enough calories to stay alive. And that is 100% true. My question is, of those who don't eat that way, where do you get your fiber? Because it's the fiber that feeds the microbiome that keeps everything, those short-chain fatty acids and everything in our body, uh, including the neurotransmitters, our mood, our thinking, our... Um, our digestion, our uh, the strength of our nervous system, all of that from the fiber and the residual of that, and that's the short-chain fatty acids. I'm way, way, way off, so let's get back to the summertime. So I've been in bed. I dressed up for you. I clean up well, don't I? <laughs> I had to do a meeting. I, I do a group meeting with I'm a health coach, health and wellness coach, for a lifestyle medical practice of Dr. Wayne Dysinger here in Riverside, California. And for almost four years now, which is about as long as I've been whole food plant-based, I've been whole food plant-based a little longer, I have worked with this group, and I it's an hour and a half group. And then I did a group yesterday morning, so I had to get up for both of those. And, and I thought, oh boy, I wonder if I can do that. Sure I can. You know, I mean, if this were a cold, this is exactly what it would feel like. So one more time, knock on wood, that this little bugger of a bacteria um, behaves. <laughs> so let's go back to summertime. What does summertime mean to you? Uh, kids are out of school. Possibilities. The possibilities. Where can we go? What can we do? It's so warm. I'm in Southern California. Some people can't wait for warm days because they're in northern hemispheres and they're in the cold. They can't even plant fruits and vegetables and flowers until sometimes May or June. I have spent some time in Colorado recently and we were there in May. That was supposed to be springtime and we got snow and it was darn cold and then we got rain and that was darn cold. And in June there was snow as well. Um, but here in Southern California, 
it will be, I'm looking out my window because I can usually see, I'm directly across from this beautiful, what it looks like a park, and it's actually the front of a school, and they have the monitor that shows the date, the time, and the temperature, and I think it's like 98 out there, uh, which is just fine, but it gets hotter and hotter here. September, August, September, October can be really hot in Southern California, but you know what that means? Always look for the better part of what isn't such a good thing, and that is the reframing of it. It may be hot in the middle of the day, but man, oh man, in the evenings it's gorgeous. And unlike some places in the country where the evenings, because of the humidity, are full of bugs, we don't have that. I won't say we don't have mosquitoes occasionally, but yeah, you know, we don't have the big things that come awake in the night and chew your legs up. Um, so I I um, I found that while I was yeah, I was laying around in bed not being able to do much because I, I, you know, I feel like a train's hit me. Uh, it's, you know, like a cold. Everything hurts. I started going through old pictures and I was able to clean things out. You don't want a lot of short little videos in your photos because it will shorten, it'll reduce the amount that you can store. So I got some of that done. I went through emails. I got some of that done. And I had gotten an email from a cousin who sent her Ancestry.com materials of her whole family tree, which is part of my family tree. But when it was sent, it required that I set up an account with them to see that ancestral tree. And I never did it. It took too much time. I don't have the time for this stuff, but I took the time to do it. And I finally, at my age, can tell you where certain relatives come into the family tree. That's really interesting. I didn't know. And so... I'll ask you, what can the beginning of a new season, summertime, any season, what can that mean to us in terms of possibilities, in terms of what we can get done, in terms of what you love about that time of year, in terms of what it's going to show you uh, about um, the area that you live in, and what changes, some of you change in a major way, season to season to season. We in Southern California don't so much because we can plant 12 months out of the year. I was a landscape designer for uh, uh, commercially for 15 years. And there wasn't any time that we wouldn't install one of my designs. The crews that installed my designs would do them in the middle of the winter because it didn't matter. We, we um, anyway, we didn't get snow here and all of that. So that's all I wanted to bring up. This is a new season. This is the longest day of the year. This is a time for reflection and appreciation. And in my group today, the hour and a half group that I was doing, we had the opportunity to look at opinions and attitudes about events and um reality. And one of the things that we brought up as a conclusion was that it's not what's happening, it's the way we view it. In other words, I brought up the word reframing, reframing. Whatever is going on in our lives, whatever we are struggling with, whatever happens to us, we can reframe it in terms of possibilities, in terms of our belief. Excuse me. I'm oh, trying not to snort at you. In terms of our beliefs as to outcomes, we don't have to look at life and look at things going on or coming up with fear. If we believe that everything that's happening in our life has a measure of good in it, everything, if you read Aging Powerfully, you'll see that there were times in my life, because it's partially a memoir, and then a, a very good read with self-help and direction on longevity, uh, things weren't, things weren't uh, pretty <laughs> for a long time. But you know what? There was always, 
a way of reframing that, of finding possibilities, of looking for the, 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 the rose in the frozen garden. There was always something that could lead me in this case to believe or to connect with someone that showed me what was possible, hold on to that when there wasn't anything else to hold on to. So I recommend that. I, um, I'd like to introduce that word, possibilities for one and reframing for another. If it's not what you're hoping for, if you're looking ahead, because things aren't all peaches and cream or roses and, you know, daffodils. Uh, in many people's lives right now. But if we see the possibilities, believe in where it can take us, and not live in fear, reframing everything into where we can take that or how it can work out, because ultimately most things do, we live in equanimity, another great word, equanimity, calm, purposeful, um, balanced um, mind and emotions, uh, and enjoy every one of our days. And this is the beginning of yet a new season. Why not adopt that in your life? I'm going to read one more. Um, set of wonderful words, and this time from Henry James. He wrote, summer afternoon, summer afternoon. To me, those have always been two of the most beautiful words in the English language. Isn't that lovely? Summer afternoon, summer afternoon. To me, those have always been the most beautiful words in the English language. Have a great day, because I know I'm going to. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you got something out of this. And um, take good care of yourselves. I must admit, I, um, I think I've learned a lesson. I'm going back to masks sometimes, but I don't really know. I don't know. We'll see. Bye-bye. <laughs>